But you were saying basically like interacting with Goetia is like getting in with the mob for $20. Like it's not worth the burden. But then by the time I talked to you in April, you were saying that like demons are not bad and that essentially, um, if I understood you rightly, it's like when you're non-attached, I think one needs to achieve a certain state to, to be able to interact with them in the proper way. And you can yeah. tell me if I'm wrong about that. Yeah, how are they not bad? And yet, why are so many starting magicians scared of them, freaked out, and and that they experience them as like chaotic and crazy and maybe even manifesting uh, problematic issues in life? Yeah, well, that, that change of opinion is, is not really an opinion that was ever changed. It's just that my, my opinion on that, uh, for me, is, is what works for me. Because okay. for me, I have absolutely no reason to use the goetia for anything because i see Ah. it as going to the mafia for twenty dollars because gotcha what what i i need is is very 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 little i used to have four or five temples in my room and now i just have one that is just devoted to kali that i do my meditations at that i that i do my mantras at and that i just do that's kind of like my little hub but goetia is not bad because it startles you and the 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 greatest thing about it something startling you is it makes you question your sense of self which is why it's really good and really bad for magicians to get into that right away because some people are adrenaline junkies and they just want to see if something works so that's mm-hmm. why they'll do goetia which then again is very topical but the reason why there's such a negative stigma around goetia is because of the uh, preparatory immersion that is supposed to take place beforehand israel rogardi uh, talked about uh, he thought that people should like go to therapy or have like mental health evaluations from like six months to a year before they join the Golden Dawn. Because a lot of mm. what people do is they try to find very spiritual solutions for very mundane problems. I've been wow. around very many people like that. Like the the most common example I give that I probably even gave last time and the time before we talked, but it's just pretty useful is that if you have a headache, you can pray to all the medicine Buddhas and anoint yourself with this thrice illustrious oil and do all these meditations. Or you can go to Walgreens and take an Advil. Uh, and then your a, a headache will be gone yeah. in an hour. Or you can do a three-day sadhana where you fast and pray to all the medicine Buddhas. It's like, yeah, well, sometimes you just got to take the Advil, man. Like, like, hey, if you're going right. through all this bad shit in your life, maybe stop doing bad shit and maybe go to therapy instead of trying to evoke a whole bunch of demons. Because all they're going to do is they're going to throw that stuff right back in your face. Because they're going to be really honest with you and they're going to say, hey, you're being fucking stupid and this is what you're doing wrong. And a lot of people say, oh, that's that's the the, the demon's evil. It's like, well, no, they're trying to do that because they're trying to get you to think, you know, uh, magic wouldn't be worth doing then if all you did was go there and they were like, ah, the prophet is here. Because then uh, that would be really cool the first time, but then you would get tired of it really fast. It's kind of like whenever you beat a video game and you're at the end game, you don't play it for another hundred hours. You kind of like dick around for a little bit and you're like, okay, well, I kind of kind of did the thing, I guess. There's there's nothing really yeah. else to do. So then you just kind of stop playing it. It's it's the same thing there. But the negative stigma also comes from the, the cultural side and the fact that uh, the occult community likes to um, make a mountain out of a molehill about things because that's mm. part of what keeps the culture alive is just... Uh, bullshit talk like how they said that Enochian magic is the most dangerous form of magic you can possibly do and that it could kill you and that you need to do 10 to 15 years of regular practical magic and it's like uh, I don't know I think life's way too short to to do any of that even the most dangerous magic in the world which is certainly Enochian magic is not nearly as dangerous as uh, driving your car in traffic or being out in the world on a busy city street you know you're more sure. likely to get um, shot by a, a random mass shooter or get struck by lightning or get eaten by a bear or die in a car accident than you are to really have anything truly, truly negative happen to you and any kind of magical operation. Because one thing that you realize yeah. is that, that the conduit that you're interfacing with is just an aspect of yourself that you don't yet understand. And you start to understand that by uncovering the layers. It's it's like riding an elephant looking for an elephant until you realize that you've been riding an elephant the whole time and that you see other people riding elephants and you're like, well, they're not looking for elephants. What, what, where the fuck did they get these elephants from until they're, they're like, dude, look <laughs> down. 
you know, but I mean, that's that's yeah. important to do. I think that to be able to realize that you don't need to do something, sometimes you have to do it. And I think that not doing Goetia in order to come to that realization that you don't need to do Goetia, sometimes you have to do it. It's like if you tell a kid, hey, that's hot, don't touch it. Even if they know that it's hot, sometimes they need to learn that it's not to touch it by touching it. And and there's there's right. nothing inherently wrong with that. I, I think that's totally fine. So my opinion was uh, a, a bit more brutal at the time because I was like, ah, you don't need any of that shit. Just read the Upanishads and meditate two hours a day and just eat rice and lentils and you'll be fine. It's like, yeah, but that leaves people pretty high and dry uh, because that, that doesn't address a, a lot of the problems. They're like, yeah, I can do that, but why am I suffering? Like, why do I feel the need to search far and wide for some magical path? Other people are just blissfully ignorant and they're doing fine. Are, it, are they better mm -hmm. off than me because they don't even think about this shit? And is magic just like this gigantic collective psychosis of the... the I don't the subtle psychology of man is this all just like a a mental masturbation that we do to cope with the fact that we're gonna fucking die someday and and the the yeah. answer is no absolutely not magic does work but those are really really good questions to ask and it is asking those questions that will bring that sort of acute suffering into view so that liberation from suffering is possible. Hey, what's up? This is Josh, and the clip you just heard is from my show, Zeitheist. It's in all the podcast places. You know where to get your podcasts. It's there. It's also on YouTube, which is the best form of it because you get all the video stuff too. Am I going to beg you to subscribe? Am I going to beg you to like it in a da -da -da on the channel? No, I don't give a shit. Do what you want. But if you're interested in the cult, spirituality, meditation, all that stuff, you'd probably benefit from listening to it. So thanks.